All right, we're going to start out by solving rational equations. People have trouble with this primarily because they have trouble finding the LCD, but at least in problem number one here, that's not going to be a problem. Let's see. Um, yeah, if I go ahead and move this problem over here, we'll have even fewer problems. Dear, probably put it down there a million times. Yes, I did, but that's okay. We'll just move it on up, make it smaller. There, that way I don't have to keep flipping back and forth. We're going to solve this equation. The first thing I have to do is figure out what are the values that will make that equation undefined. And you know what the trick to that is. You take the denominator and set it equal to zero. So Z plus three equals zero. Subtract three, subtract three. Z equals negative three. So this is going to be the bad boy and what we're going to do, or girl, or person, or mammal. And we're going to say Z cannot equal that number. And once we know that, well, we have to know that because we have to know what answer Z cannot have. So now we can calculate the lowest common denominator and we'll be doing that but here we don't have to do it, and let me show you why. Let me make a note here. We don't have to calculate the LCD here. Why? Well, let me write this first. Don't have to calculate calculate, yes indeed, the LCD because, ah, I outwitted myself, one thing at a time. We have one fraction equals one fraction. That's a truly awesome thing to have. Look at this. Here's one fraction, Z minus seven over Z plus three. And then we've got equals one half. That's one fraction equals one fraction. This is a proportion, which is a proportion. No. I must have copied that a lot of times. I wonder if it's possible. No, okay. Well, I am not going to trouble myself too much there. Maybe that'll work. 
Excuse me a minute. Hopefully that'll work. All right, one fraction equals one fraction. Uh, see, the whole thing is don't have to calculate LCD because one fraction equals one fraction, which is a pro. It's a day. It's going to be a day because. Which is a proportion. So what's so great about a proportion? You can cross multiply. Pretend there's an X. I know you already know this, but just in case there's someone who doesn't or who's forgotten it, you can make it invisible that's invisible, except to us because we have superpowers. Yeah. Professor? Yes. How did you end up getting one half? I missed something. That? All I did was copy the problem. Oh, OK. Never mind. Sorry. Thank you. But thank you. Thank you. Always be ready to correct me. Um, so yes, we can multiply along the diagonals when and only when you have one fraction equals one fraction. So we didn't need to bother with an LCD. So I'm going to kind of mark through this. And we're going to do the problem here. Now. Solve the resulting equation and. I'm not sure what that was, but we're going to find the solutions, OK? So here we are. We're going to multiply along the diagonals. That'll be 2 times Z minus 7. Equals 1 times Z plus 3. And I could have put it the other way around. I could have said one plus C, one one times C plus three equals two times C minus seven. That that would have been great. The important thing is to multiply along the diagonals and put in equals in the middle. So I don't have to do all the hard stuff we usually associate with solving. Um, a rational equation, a fraction equation, which is great. All right, let us distribute 2 times z, 2 times negative 7, and 1 times z, and 1 times plus 3. So we'll have 2z minus 14 equals z plus three. Now notice how incredibly easy this is going to be to solve. I mean, we've been solving some difficult equations. I'm going to subtract C from both sides. That'll equal zero on the right, and two Z minus one Z is one Z, or Z. That's great. So I'll have Z minus 14 equals three. Now I will, in order to solve for Z, I'll add 14 to both sides. And that will get us, because this equals zero, this will get us Z equals 17. Now I can't say for sure that's true until I go up here and look at what Z cannot equal. 
Well, that makes me feel pretty safe. That and um, we could go ahead and take the time to check, but I have insider information that it's correct. OK. In fact, here's my insider information now. Twenty four. Oh, because the problem just changed. It's 17. It really is. Now. Proportions, you got to remember proportions. Eventually, we're going to have some word problems with proportions, I think. Not today, though. Yay. Anyway, they're notoriously easy because you don't have to deal with the lowest common denominator. All you have to do is cross multiply. All right, let's move on to the next one. This will be more complicated. Why? Because this is the problem. Well, make sure I don't miscopy it. I'll copy it. And put it right here. Well, it will eventually be right there. I'm not going to commit the same sin that I committed before. Okay. There. We now have three fractions, so any thought you might have of cross multiplying has gone bye bye. We are going to find a lowest common denominator. And I never was good at finding LCDs until I took college algebra and found the secret to making it easy. Here it is. Here are our, our, oh, okay, wait a minute. Find the values that will make one or more of the denominators equal zero. Well, there's only one variable, A, down here. So I set the denominator equal to one, and I have A equals zero, which is already solved. So that means I have to beware in case I get a, um, an answer of zero. Now let's see what the answer is going to be. Negative 28 seventeenths, not quite zero. Hmm, okay. So now we're going to calculate our lowest common denominator. You want the lowest because you want the lowest possible numbers. However, look at what your denominators are. You've got, you've got a seven, you've got a four, and you've got an A. Now here is the secret to using an LCD. LCD secret. This is worth a lot of money. LCD. It's got to cancel out, all right? Must cancel. all denominators. Let's see if I can get that S in there. Yeah, you've got to be able to cancel all the denominators, which means you have to be able to cancel a seven 
you have to be able to cancel a 4, and you have to be able to cancel an A. Well, that means my LCD should look something like this. In fact, it should be exactly that. 7 times 4 times A. which is 28A. That is going to be my lowest common denominator. Now see what I do with it, and this is so elegant. Here's the trick, the secret to making fraction equations easy. I'm going to recopy that and put room between them. You know how I'm writing this, or see how I'm writing it. I'm making the line long. Now, here's the strategy. I take the LCD, I'm going to make it another color. My favorite color. I'm going to make the LCD 28A, and I am going to multiply all three numerators on both sides of the equation, so it's allowed. Just like that. Let me roll this up for you so you can see it. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so here we go. We're going to cancel out those denominators. 1 times 28A over 7. The 7, well, 28, let's write it this way. 28 is 4 times 7. So the 7s cancel. Minus. 3 times 28a over 4. And 28 equals 4 times 7. So now the 4s cancel. Yes? And then 1 times 28a is 28a times a. And the A's cancel. You don't have any more denominators, which means you don't have any more fractions. We are going to have a fractionless equation to solve. Here's what's left. We have a 1. We have a 4. We have an A. We have a 3, we have a 7, we have an A, and we have a 28. So 1 times 4 times, uh, 1 times 4 times A is 4A minus 3 times 7 times A, which is 21 a equals 28. Now this is just a normal equation. Okay, well, 4a minus 21a is 17, right? Negative 17a.
And so, we'll divide both sides by negative 17. Now, don't leave it that way, and I'll tell you why in a minute. A equals, pull that negative sign either out to the front, like this, or this. It's very bad form to have a negative sign on the, <clears throat> on the bottom of a fraction in the denominator, and my math lab will say, sorry, you're wrong, even though you're not technically wrong. But you are being rude. How about that? Rude people do not put their negative signs on the bottom of a fraction, and that is just one of the rules of politeness in mathematics. Sometimes you have to deal with that. So make your answer like this, or make your answer like this, and you will have no trouble from my math lab. Let's go over what we did here. We had our rational equation. We wrote down the denominators. We know that the purpose of the LCD is actually it's not an LCD here. It's a lowest common multiple. So it would be better to say LCM. Let's do that. But it is, you calculate it the same way you do an LCD. There. Okay, so the purpose of the lowest common multiple, the LCM, is to cancel out all the denominators. Well, that means that 7 and 4 and A have to be canceled out. So you might as well, I mean, there is no alternative. You need to have a 7 and a 4 and an A in your lowest common multiple. So there it is, 28A. And you multiply the numerators of every term by 28A, and you do it like this. No, you do not multiply by 28A over 28A. That is so wrong. You do that if you want to make two. Well, you don't do it is what it comes down to. Just don't do it. You do it like this, just like I did it. The, the lowest common multiple goes up here, up here, up here. And then it can do its job, which is cancel out every denominator. And that gives you a basic fraction, a, a basic equation, an easy to solve equation with no fractions in it, so no stress. And let's check the answer. Normally you won't have access to that. So what you would do is you would either go to the trouble to check the answer, and most people don't, I'll be honest with you, most people don't check the answer, but they do have to check and make sure that the answer is not what the variable is not allowed to equal. We said here in the first step that A cannot equal zero, and indeed our answer was not zero, and so now we're happy, we can accept this. Questions about this? Oh, 
OK, let's go on to the next problem. Notice they're going to get progressively uglier. That's OK. We can handle it. Let me drag it over here. I wish it wouldn't put it down there. OK, here's our equation. We only have one fraction in it, which means we only have one denominator in it. I take the denominator, q equals zero, set it equal to zero. Well, that's an equation in and of itself. I don't need to solve it, it's already solved. So that means q cannot be zero. We have another one of those. OK, we're going to calculate the lowest common denominator here. And here it seems just a little bit silly. Lowest common denominator, lowest common multiple. I only have one denominator, so my lowest common denominator or lowest common multiple is Q. Here's what I do. Well, no, I wait to move it up until I write it down. Q plus 12 over Q equals negative 13. Okay, here we go. And I'm going to make Q purple, just because it seems appropriate. It's not really purple, it's dark violet. I looked up the color. All right, this is an equation. And whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. There are two terms over here and one term over here, I have to multiply each of them by Q. So times Q times Q times Q. So you see the way I multiply a fraction by a number or a variable? It goes in the numerator. So now, here we go. I'm going to have Q squared plus 12Q over Q. So the Qs are canceled. Equals negative 13Q. And this is the equation we're going to solve. So we'll have Q squared plus 12Q, no, plus 12, equals negative 13Q. And using the zero principle, I add 13Q to both sides. I could have made room in here. And that will give me Q squared plus 13Q plus 12 equals zero. Now, uh, one is my leading coefficient. So, I 
I get to write a Q and a Q and 12 equals 12 times one and 12 plus one equals 13, which is the middle number. So I'll say plus 12 and plus one. Then I set each factor equal to zero. Q plus 12 equals zero. Q plus one equals zero. <coughs> and we subtract 12 from both sides and get uh, Q equals negative 12. And we subtract one from both sides. And we get Q equals negative one. And so let me check and see. Neither of those numbers is a zero. And indeed, we're correct, yay. So in you see how to write it in the answer box there. You're gonna have your answer box. And order doesn't matter. So negative 12, negative one or negative one, 12, but put a comma in the middle. Do not put that in parentheses. It's not a point. All you're doing is you're listing numbers. Questions about this? Let's go back over the steps. I mean, it was an easier than usual problem. Uh, we have Q plus 12 over Q equals negative 13. I set the denominator equal to zero and find out that Q cannot be allowed to equal zero. Then I find my lowest common denominator, but since I only have one denominator, that's it. Denominator multiple, hmm. six of one. Okay, each term in the equation gets multiplied by Q the uh, lowest common denominator or lowest common multiple. Then that leaves you with Q times Q is Q squared because we didn't have a denominator that could be uh, canceled out here or here, only here. And I didn't act, oh, and I physically canceled here. Uh, so this is what I got, Q squared plus 12 equals negative 13 Q. And then I pulled the negative 13 Q over because this is a quadratic equation. And I solved it by factoring and got the answers negative 12 and negative one. Any discussion is okay with me. Okay. Number four. How wonderful. Again, we have a proportion. Look at this.
find the values that will make one or more of the denominators equal zero. We always do that. y plus two equals zero, I subtract two from both sides, and so I get y equals negative two. This is the number that will make the, the um, rational equation undefined. So what does that mean? It means that whatever may be, excuse me, whatever may be true, I cannot allow my answer to be negative two, period. If that is the only answer I get, then I'll have to say no solution. So, here we go. This is a proportion, it's one fraction equals one fraction. So, No LCD, LCM. I'll put them both. Okay. So I can not bother with those steps and just go right to the equation two, which I have right here. Two times Y minus nine. Well, let's write it y minus 9 over y plus 2 equals 1 over 2. So I make my invisible x and I multiply along the, um, den uh, the denominators the diagonals. I multiply along the diagonals. So 2 times y minus 9 equals 1 times y plus 2. 2y two minus 18 equals y plus 2. I subtract y from both sides of the equation. 2y minus y is y. Bring down the minus 18. Equals 0 plus 2, which is 2. And then I add 18 to both sides of the equation. and I get y equals 20. Now, if you were going to do this by hand, you would say, because this answer would be pretty easy, 20 minus nine over 20 plus two equals one half. Does it? I don't think so. Oh yeah, 11 over 22 equals one half, one half equals one half. Yay, I don't even have to check the answer, but let's do it anyway. There it is, 20. Okay, discussion here. Pretty obvious why you love proportions. Cross multiplying. Right, the next one, because some of these are nasty and here come the nasty ones. There is what we're going to be dealing with.
Okay. Step one, I'm going to take each denominator and set them equal to zero in order to find out the numbers that I cannot allow Z to equal. So, Z minus four equals zero, plus four, plus four. Okay, Z equals four. So I cannot allow Z to equal four. Z squared minus 16 equals zero. I can solve this by factoring. Uh, the, each of these is, this is Z squared minus four squared equals zero. So I can solve this by the difference of two squares. Z, Z, four, four, plus, minus. Then I set each factor equal to zero. Let me move over some. I set each factor equal to zero. Z plus four equals zero. Z minus four equals zero. Subtract four, subtract four. Z equals negative four. And add four, add four. Z equals four. So of course this means Z cannot, <clears throat> Z cannot equal negative four and Z cannot equal four. And finally, the last denominator is Z plus four. Now at this point, you can see there's a certain pattern here in this particular equation. We have an awful lot of fours, fours going on. Z equals negative four. Now, oops, and I forgot to put the there. Z cannot equal negative four, Z cannot equal four, and Z cannot equal negative four. So all things considered, there are three numbers that Z cannot be allowed to equal. No, there aren't, there are two. Z cannot be allowed to equal four. And Z cannot be allowed to equal negative four. And that's what we got from these three equations. Really, there are only two numbers we have to worry about. It looked like there could have been a whole lot. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can calculate our, great, our, our least common multiple or least common denominator. I am going to list the uh, uh, denominators. Z minus four, Z squared minus 16, and Z plus Four. Now, it would be a pretty horrifying thing to multiply all these together. Let's see if there's an easy way out. And there actually is. When you factor z squared minus 16, you find out it equals z plus 4 times z minus 4. And notice that Z minus four 
is in z squared minus 16. And z plus 4 is in z squared minus 16. So, we can eliminate, we can eliminate, we can cancel out all three denominators just by, by making our lowest common multiple or lowest common denominator z squared minus 16 in its factored form. So this is going to be my lowest common denominator. Will you say Will that one time? Uh-huh. Okay. We listed our three denominators, z minus four, z squared minus 16, and z plus four. And then this is factorable, so we factored it and found out something kind of wonderful that we don't have to multiply all three of these denominators together in order to come up with a multiple that will cancel out all the denominators. And the reason is that it's nowhere near as bad as it might have been because Z minus four is right there. It's part of Z squared minus 16. Z squared minus 16 factors into Z plus four times Z minus four. So there is Z minus four there is z plus four, we're going to be able to cancel out each of these denominators just by multiplying by z plus four times z minus four. Which is a great bargain. So here I go. Professor? Yes. Oh, I, I kind of have a question. Sure. So, so do we make, do we all, make all the denominators, denominators the factor form, form z squared negative 16? Oh, yeah, you always, factor, all you always factor anything you can. Right, so all the denominators are not going to be z squared minus 16. They're going to be the factored form. Right, good. OK. All right, so I'm going to write down the original equation, but leave room. Z over Z minus four. And this time I'm going to put parentheses around them just because it makes me feel better. Plus Z over Z squared minus 16 in its factored form. That's a Z, not an X. Z plus four, Z minus four, equals Z plus five over Z plus four. That's our original equation, except I've expanded the fraction bar so that I can multiply each one by the LCD. I don't have any terms that are not fractions here. Okay, now, Z plus four, Z minus four, Z plus four, Z 
minus four. Z plus four. Z minus four. I've multiplied each term um, by the lowest common multiple, lowest common denominator. And what I'm seeing here, this is the rough draft of a form I want to make, that there is no need to make that a separate step because that would mean I'd have to rewrite everything. And I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to do it up here and just put an arrow. Now that I've written this this way, my least common denominator, lowest common multiple, is going to do its job. Namely, this z minus 4 will cancel that z minus 4. And over here, z plus 4 cancels z plus 4. And z minus 4 cancels z minus 4. And over here, z plus 4 cancels z plus 4. And now I do not have any denominators. Let's look at what I do have. I have the survivors are z times z plus 4 and just z and z plus 5 times z minus 4. So that means we will have z times z plus 4 plus z equals z plus 5 times z minus 4. And we are going to solve this, remembering that we have to be very careful to make sure that none of our answers are four or negative four. So you see, this is why you wanna get rid of your denominators. Life is always more difficult when you've got a denominator. So just get rid of them. You can only cancel out denominators like that <clears throat> most of the time when you've got an equation. That's why equations are good too. All right, now, z times z is z squared. z times plus four is plus four z. z squared plus z equals z times z is z squared. z times minus 4 and negative 4 is minus 4z. Positive 5 times z or plus 5 times z is plus 5z. And positive 5 times negative 4 is negative or minus 20. So we're going to have z squared plus 5z equals z squared plus z minus 20. And I'm glancing over my work to see if I can find 
any errors and I can't. So if you find them, let me know. I'm going to start using the zero principle. Since this is longer, I'll move this stuff over here. But as I'm working, I notice that the Z square is going to zero out. That's a wonderful thing and it doesn't always happen. All right, so we're not gonna have quadratic equations. It means we don't have to worry about factoring or all that stuff. We'll have 5C equals Z minus 20. I subtract Z from both sides of the equation. 5Z minus 1Z is 4Z. Z minus Z is zero. Well, it was supposed to be that way, but we have a negative 20. Zero minus 20 is negative 20. And when I divide by four, what do I get? I get negative five, which is not four or negative four. So I can feel pretty good. And it is indeed negative five, but of course you don't have that with you all the time. I'm not sure you would want to check this, although since this answer is not, the solution is not a fraction, it would be fairly easy to go ahead and check that. Discussion about this wonderful work of art. If that's what it is. Okay, I set each denominator equal to zero and solved for, for Z. Found out what Z could not equal. Then I found my lowest common denominator. <clears throat> and I had to factor anything that's factorable. Found out that both of those factors are actually part of this one expression right here. So instead of having to create an LCD that, or LCM that consists of all three factors, and that would be a horror story, kind of, not really, but um, um, I don't have to worry about it because just by using this in its factored form, I get rid of that and that and that, which proved true. And then all I had to do was solve the leftovers. And even that was an acceptable answer that's not equal to the numbers we had to throw out. So Z equals negative five. We only have a couple more to go, I think. They are the dirtiest ones. But that's because you get to take what you learned earlier and solve problems that are even difficult. Notice how I keep hoping that if I click up there, um, the, the, the photo will paste up there. 
and it won't. It goes to the middle of the page. I just need to accept that and move on. But I want it to be the way I want it to be. <sighs> All right. We're going to check each denominator. Now these are easy to check, aren't they? I could just do this. X minus 6 equals 0. Add 6 to both sides. So X equals 6 is the answer, which means X cannot equal 6. And over here, uh, I have a I have a GCF. Let's pull that out. Well, actually, no. Let's not skip steps. Four x minus four equals zero. Four times x minus four equals zero. Um, subtract out four. Subtract out four. I mean, not subtract out. Divide out. Uh, Professor, that'd be 4x uh, uh, minus 1, would it not? Yes, it would. Thank you. You're wonderful. You're welcome. You rescued me. Oh. I'm there you go. And that leaves me with x minus 1 equals 0, so x cannot equal 1. Yes. So that leaves the big thing. I'm kind of saving the big one for last. OK. But I do have two numbers right now. X cannot equal 6. And X cannot equal 1. Now we check out this. x squared minus 7x plus 6 equals 0. With the leading coefficient 1, all I have to do is make my parentheses. And then check out the constant on the end, which is 6. Um, 6 equals 1 times 6. And negative 1 times negative 6. And I could go on and say, well, 2 times 3 and negative 2 times negative 3. But this is what I want right here. Because negative 1 plus negative 6 equals negative 7 which is the middle number. So I know that <clears throat> negative one and negative six are going to be the numbers I use. All right, so I write X and I write X and I write minus one and I write minus six. And then I set each factor equal to zero. X minus one equals zero. <laughs> X minus six equals zero. Add one to both sides, going back to the far left. X equals one and plus six plus six. X equals six. Well, good golly gosh, look at this. She said, pretending to be surprised uh, because that's the way these work out. Um, okay. What do I have here? I have X minus six 
here's x minus 6. I have x minus 1, here's x minus 1. So this is going to be a lot easier than I was afraid it was going to be. Because, you know that though, ah, no, I did this right. I was gonna say I did it wrong, but I didn't, I did it right. I only have two numbers to worry about, and that is a wonderful thing. So now part of the handiness of this step is I, um, um, yeah, it's already factored. I've already factored them, so this is not going to be so hard. I am going to have, I'm going to list right my three denominators. and x minus 6, and 4x minus 4, which equals 4 times x minus 1. So let's just bring x minus 6 out here and say it equals itself. Notice that x minus 6 is in x squared minus 7x plus 6. And x minus 1 is in x squared minus 7x plus 6. So this and this can be taken care of with this. There's only one problem. What do you do with the four? How do you get rid of the four? Multiply by one fourth. No, but you're close. My LCM LCD, and I'm just going to call it LCD since that's what I wrote. My L, oh, my LC, oh, I like to write it with this though. My L, C, D is going to be, yes, X minus one and X minus six. I'll be able to easily cancel out an X minus one and X minus six with this guy right here. But to get rid of the four, my LCD is going to have to contain a four as well. So this is going to be my lowest common denominator, least common multiple, lowest common multiple, that guy right there. The one that I multiply each term by in my equation. So let's be getting it done. And how did you get that four? From right here. Notice that X minus six is in the top um, denominator. And X minus one is in the top denominator. But I don't have a four in the top denominator. So this four is left over. You've, oh, got to, okay. you've got to include it in the LCD. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So now, I'm going to rewrite this. I luckily have it written over there. One. Always write these in factored form. Because 
because we're going to hit them with an LCD that's in factored form. Okay, there I've multiplied each term in the equation by the LCD. And just to be perfect, let me write LCM as well. They're the same thing. They're constructed the same way. Okay, now I had this wonderful idea. Let's see if it works. Remember life is an experiment. I think I can do it. Make it a little smaller. Pull it over here. Oh, that is too brilliant for words. <sighs> All right, let's do this. X minus one cancels X minus one. X minus six cancels X minus six. X minus six cancels X minus six. Four cancels four. X minus one cancels X minus one. And I am done getting rid of denominators. And now all I have to do is write the leftovers. I have one times four, which is four. And here I have one times four, which is four, times X minus one. And here I have one times X minus six, which is X minus six. I always am so surprised at how ridiculously simple the equation is after I have factored. Look at that. It's not even a quadratic. Yep, yep, man, that is so great. All right, four minus four X. Now this is a negative four times negative one, that's gonna be positive four equals X minus six. Four plus four is eight, we'll have eight minus four X equals X minus six. And now I will add four X to both sides. So that eight 
equals x plus 4x is 5x minus 6. And then I'll add 6 to both sides. And I'll get 14 equals 5x and then I'll divide by 5 and I'll divide by 5 x equals 14 fifths which is not Six or negative uh, six or positive one. And let's check the real answer. <gasps> yes, it's right. Okay, two more problems, then we take a break. This is the same kind of problem. Okay. So I'll probably move a little more quickly through this one, maybe through the next one, unless it throws us some kind of curve ball. Okay, these really are easy. These little guys, let's get the little guys out of the way. Z minus four equals zero. And this one is Z plus five. A four equals zero. We've been there before today. So we're gonna have uh, Z equals positive four z equals negative 4. And so, of course, that means that for these two, z cannot be allowed to equal 4, and z cannot be allowed to equal negative 4. But now let's work on the more involved one. We're going to factor this by the difference of two squares. However, be sure to pull your GCF out first. This is four times Z squared. And this is four, uh, four times 16. So let me write it this way. 16 times four so that I can pull a 4GCF from both terms. 4 times Z squared minus 16, which is Z squared minus 4 squared. Oh, equals 0 letting myself get into too much of a hurry. So we can, yeah, we can, we can do this with an equation. We'll have C squared minus four squared equals zero. So we'll have, yeah, Z, C 
equals zero, plus four minus four. So from here, we also get C plus four equals zero, Z minus four equals zero. So Z equals negative four, Z equals positive four. Because we subtracted four from both sides, we added four to both sides. And of course, this means that Z cannot equal negative four cannot equal positive four, so we have complete agreement here. Z cannot equal four. Z cannot equal negative four. Now we're gonna calculate the lowest common denominator. Least common multiple. I have to go back and make that correction also. So here are my three denominators. One of them is factorable. Somebody sure likes fours a lot. Okay. Well. All right. Same exact situation we had before. Z minus four is in there, Z plus four is in there, and even the four is in there, so we can just use this as our lowest common denominator, right here, uh, least common multiple. So now, one over, that one has a lot of factors. No, it doesn't really, does it? One over four times C plus four times C minus four. Pull out your fraction bar. Plus three over Z minus four equals five over Z plus four. And now this is going to be my LCD, so one times so I'm taking the LCM. or LCD. I mean, like I said, they are constructed exactly the same way. It's just that here, here I'm multiplying everything by it.
there. All right. The fours cancel. The Z plus fours cancel. The Z minus fours cancel. Over here. The Z minus fours cancel. Over here. The Z plus fours cancel. And so what I'm left with is the survivors. There's a one in the first term plus three times four times Z plus four. That'll be 12 times Z plus four equals five times four times Z minus four, which is 20 times Z minus four. Does that look right? It does look right to me. All right, now we are going to solve this like we would any equation. One plus 12C plus 48 equals 20 Z minus 80. And one plus 48 is 49. So I will have 12 Z plus 49 on the left and 20 Z minus 80 on the right. I'll subtract 12 Z from both sides of the equation. Which will give me 49 equals 20 minus 12 is 8, so 8 Z minus 80. And then I'll add 80 to both sides of the equation. And I'll get 129 equals 8 Z. And then I'll divide by 8 and I will divide by 8 and I'm betting it won't break down. Yeah, three goes into this, and it's odd. Three does not go into that, and it's even. Right, yeah. All right, so 129 over eight should be my answer. Let's see. It's definitely not four or negative four. Yes, okay. Now I believe there's one more, one more. But I bet you know how to do these. Nonetheless, let's just do it quickly. We are going to have
Okay. Oh, wow. Well, this is a little more complicated, isn't it? All right. Well, let's just do the whole things. 7B minus 56 equals 0. Add 56 to both sides of the equation. That gives us 7B equals 56. Divide by 7, divide by 7. So B equals 8. Uh, which means B cannot equal 8. Again, let's do the short ones first, okay? So 8B minus 64 equals 0 plus 64 plus 64. 8B equals 64. Divide by 8. Divide by 8. Really? B equals 8. So B cannot equal 8. Again, haven't had that happen before. All right. All right. Okay. Well, here we are. Here's our uglier uglier, longer one. B squared minus 16B plus 64 equals zero. B, B minus eight minus eight equals zero. You are kidding me. I hate to get upset, but now this is wild. Look at this. 64 equals negative eight times negative eight and negative eight plus negative eight equals negative 16. So B minus eight equals zero. B minus eight equals zero. They're going to be identical. B equals eight and B equals eight. And both of them mean that B cannot equal eight. Never has it been said so many different ways that B cannot equal eight. Okay, here we go again. Um, now I list the denominators, 7B minus 56. Um, and I'll put a little equals there. B squared minus 16B plus 64 equals and 8B minus 64 equals. Well, this is going to be 7 times B minus 8. Um, yeah, that's true. This is going to be B minus 8. Actually, it's B minus 8 times B minus 8, which is B minus 8 squared. And this is going to be 8 times B minus 8. 
So we have. Interesting. We have something interesting here. B minus 8 is part of B minus 8 squared. And B minus 8 is part of B minus 8 squared. So our B minus 8 down here and our B minus 8 up here is covered in there. So definitely part of my LCD. LCM. Is going to be B minus 8 squared. I can't take the square away. And then I've still got to have a 7 and an 8 because they're part of denominators. So whatever I have to cancel out the denominators is going to have to contain a 7 and an 8, which is 56. So 56 B minus 8 squared is going to be my thing that I want. So we're going to have B, 7B minus 56. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, I need to write it factored. Seven times B minus eight minus eight. times B minus eight times B minus eight. I think that's the best way to do it. Equals B minus seven No, maybe it wasn't. over 8B. No, and I'm going to write it factored. 8 times B minus 8. Okay, now. So we'll write this as uh, 56 B minus 8 B minus 8. We could even write the 56 is 7 times 8. I mean, that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Why don't we? Okay. 7 times 8, just so you can see that you can do it times B minus 8, times B minus 8, times 7 times 8, times B minus 8, times B minus 8, times 7 times 8, times B minus 8 times B minus 8. Yeah, that 8 was there. Okay. All right. All right, here we go. The 7s cancel. That's why you needed it there. And we'll let those B minus 8s cancel. Now these B minus eights and B minus eights cancel. The eights cancel. And these B minus eights cancel. 
leaving us with. And I'm going to circle these because there's a lot of stuff written there. A B and an 8 and a B minus 8 and 8 times 7 times 8. I hate big numbers. And a 7 and a B minus 7 and a B minus 8. All right, we're going to have 8, B, times B minus 8, minus, mm, 8 times 7, no, wrong place, clear that. Clear it all. I just turned off my calculator. No, I didn't. Clear. <sighs> seven times eight times seven, or eight times seven times eight. Eight times seven times eight. Four forty-eight. Four hundred. You agree? Yes, yes. Good. Thank you. Equals seven times B minus seven times B minus eight. Oh, good grief. We can do it. Um, 8B times B is 8B squared. And 8B times minus 8 is minus 64B. And then minus 448 equals 7 times B times B is B squared. B times minus 8 is minus 8B. Minus 7 times B is minus 7B. And, well, negative 7 times negative 8 is positive 56, so that will be a plus 56. Ha! Huh. All right. 8 B squared minus 64 B minus 4, 48 equals 7 times B squared minus 15 B plus 56. And 8 B squared minus 60 4 B minus 4, 48 equals 7 B squared minus 7 times 5 is 35. Carry the 3. 7 times 1 is 7 plus 3 is 10 plus 7 times 6 is 42. 7 times 5 is 35, plus 4 is 39. I think that's right. Would somebody please check for me? Fits with what, what I've got. got. Yay! That's two of us. Just forgetting a B. Pardon me? Just forgetting a B. Am I forget? Ah! Yes, thank you. Hate doing that. All right, now, 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 we're going to drag everything over from the right. 
and go to the left. So I'll subtract 7B squared from both sides. I will add 105B, add 105B, and oh no, subtract Yeah, 392 from both sides. Well, I like the zero. And we're going to have one B squared. And 105 minus 64, that's 1, and 10 minus 6 is 4, so 41B equals 8 plus 2 is 10, carry the 1. 9 plus 1 is 10 plus 4 is 14, carry the 1, that's an 8, that's a minus 8. 40. Oh joy, oh joy. Well, I'm betting it's factorable, but I'm wondering if I shouldn't just use the quadratic formula. Nonetheless, let's be tough, or try to be. But I feel more like whining. I, I, I hate big numbers. There, I said it. Okay, now, negative 840 divided by x. Second graph. All right. That could be it. Let's try negative 15 times positive 56 and see what we, oh, plus, I mean plus. You never know, you know, you just never know. <sighs> All right. No, I didn't change any signs, did I? No. Okay, double check, double check. Yep, 15 and 56, all right. And now I set each factor equal to zero and solve for B. And that's not four or negative four or eight or negative eight or whatever our nasty numbers were. Oh, oh, it's one. It's just one number. B cannot equal eight. Well, neither of those is eight. So let's see what these guys say. 
Doggone. Doggone. All right. Break time. Let us let us get back at 10 a.m. How about that?